Rejection. It's something we've all experienced. Whether it's in love, career, or friendships, rejection cuts deep, leaving us feeling inadequate, confused, and sometimes even lost. You can work tirelessly on a project, give your all in a relationship, or pour your soul into something, and still face that dreaded no. But what if I told you that rejection, no matter how painful, is an opportunity? A lesson disguised as failure. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. The Stoics believe that external events like rejection are beyond our control. What is within our power, however, is our reaction. How we choose to perceive and handle that rejection. Rejection doesn't define us. Our response to it does. In this video, we'll uncover nine powerful lessons that will help you master how to deal with rejection in the most powerful way possible. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe and watch until the end. Now, let's dive into these lessons rooted in Stoicism designed to help you turn rejection into your greatest strength. 1. Recognize that rejection is a part of life. Rejection is something we all encounter and it begins early in life. Think about the first time you were chosen last for a game, or when you didn't make the team, or when a childhood crush didn't reciprocate your feelings. As we grow, the rejections become more complex, missing out on a promotion, a relationship ending, or being turned down for something you've worked so hard for. These experiences aren't anomalies. They're an essential part of being human. The Stoics understood this better than anyone. Seneca wisely said, Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. Just as physical exercise makes us stronger, the mental and emotional strain from rejection builds our resilience. The Stoics didn't try to dodge rejection or pretend it didn't hurt. Instead, they expected it, knowing that life setbacks are inevitable. Rejection isn't personal. It's universal. Everyone, no matter how successful or confident they seem, faces rejection. From artists whose work gets criticized to entrepreneurs whose ideas get dismissed, rejection touches us all. The sooner we accept this truth, the less rejection will affect us on a personal level. When you realize that rejection isn't a reflection of your worth, but simply a part of the broader journey of life, you can start viewing it differently. Take a moment to reflect on people who inspire you. They likely faced more rejection than you can imagine. J.K. Rowling, for instance, was rejected by multiple publishers before Harry Potter became a worldwide phenomenon. Steve Jobs was famously ousted from Apple, the company he founded, only to return later and redefine the entire tech industry. These examples show that rejection doesn't have to be the end of the road. In fact, it's often a necessary detour to something greater. Once you internalize that rejection is a natural part of life, it loses its power over you. Instead of asking, why me? After being rejected, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? This mindset shift allows you to see rejection not as a roadblock, but as an opportunity for growth and redirection. The stoic lesson here is that your reaction to rejection is what truly defines you, not the rejection itself. 2. Accept what happened. When rejection hits, our first instinct is often to replay the situation in our minds over and over, wondering what could have gone differently. We think about what we should have said or done, wishing we could rewind time and make it all go our way. This response is natural, but as Epictetus teaches us, it's also unproductive. He said, don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually does. Then your life will flow well. In real life, we often resist this idea of acceptance. Think about a time when you were rejected. Perhaps you didn't land that job. You wanted so badly, or maybe a relationship ended abruptly. It's easy to fall into the trap of, what if? And why didn't it go my way? You start imagining different scenarios, hoping the past could somehow be changed. But here's the hard truth. 
It can't. What happened happened. No amount of regret, frustration, or wishing can rewrite what's already set in stone. Acceptance, in this sense, doesn't mean giving up or resigning yourself to failure. It means coming to terms with the reality of the situation and letting go of the need to change what's already happened. When you accept that rejection is final, you free yourself from the weight of regret and disappointment. It allows you to stop dwelling on the past and focus your energy on the future. Imagine you're on a boat that's stuck in a storm. You can't control the storm. It's already happening. But you can control how you navigate through it. Do you waste your energy wishing the storm wasn't there? Or do you adjust your sails and steer towards safety? Acceptance is like adjusting your sails. It gives you the power to steer through adversity with a clear mind instead of being consumed by frustration over something you can't change. Look at the most successful individuals, athletes, entrepreneurs, artists. They've all faced rejection. But what sets them apart is their ability to accept failure, learn from it, and move forward. They don't waste time wishing for a different outcome. They embrace what has happened and focus on what they can do next. This is the essence of Stoic philosophy. By accepting rejection, you give yourself a sense of mental liberation. Instead of being weighed down by negative emotions, you gain the clarity to move forward with peace and purpose. Acceptance doesn't mean you stop caring. It means you stop fighting battles you can't win, so you can invest that energy into battles you can. The Stoic approach is to face reality as it is, not as we wish it to be. Once you master the art of acceptance, you stop being a victim of your circumstances and become the architect of your response. That's where real strength lies. 3. Process your emotions. Rejection stings. There's no denying that. It's completely natural to feel hurt, disappointed, or even angry when you're faced with rejection. But the key isn't to suppress these emotions, as some might think Stoicism suggests. Rather, the Stoics believe that we should acknowledge our emotions, understand them, and then choose how to respond to them with reason and logic. Marcus Aurelius famously said, The more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. This includes the emotions that arise from rejection. When we allow those emotions to overwhelm us, we surrender our ability to think clearly and act rationally. It's not about ignoring how you feel. It's about giving yourself the space to process those feelings so they don't take control of your actions. Think of it like this. When you touch something hot, the pain is immediate. Your instinct is to pull away. That's how emotions are when we experience rejection. The pain is sharp, and our natural instinct is to react, whether it's lashing out withdrawing, or feeling worthless. But what if, instead of reacting immediately, you gave yourself a moment to understand why it hurts and how you can handle it in a better way? Let's look at a real-life example. Imagine applying for your dream job and getting rejected. Your initial feelings might range from disappointment to frustration, even self-doubt. It's crucial to sit with those emotions for a moment, to feel them fully without pushing them away. But once you've done that, you can take a step back and ask yourself, what now? How can I move forward in a way that benefits me? The Stoics remind us that while we may not control rejection itself, we control how we process and respond to it. By taking the time to understand your feelings, you don't let them dictate your next move. Instead of reacting impulsively or dwelling on the rejection, you allow yourself to reflect and move forward with clarity. It's like navigating through fog. If you charge ahead without thinking, you might get lost or make a wrong turn. But if you pause, let the fog clear and consider your path, you're more likely to find your way with ease. Processing your emotions works the same way. By giving yourself time to feel the pain of rejection, you're not avoiding it. You're letting the emotional fog settle so that reason and logic can guide your decisions. We've all been there, feeling rejected and wanting to act out of pure emotion. But imagine if you could channel those feelings into something productive. The Stoic approach is not to deny your humanity, but to accept it and use it 
to your advantage. When you learn to process your emotions calmly and thoughtfully, you take control of your life instead of letting rejection control you. By doing this, you transform a painful experience into an opportunity for growth, resilience, and wisdom. Rejection may stir up emotions, but it's how we process them that defines our strength. 4. Don't allow rejection to define you. Rejection can hit hard. It often feels personal, like a reflection of your worth or abilities. Whether it's being turned down in a relationship, missing out on a promotion, or having your ideas rejected, it's easy to feel like these moments define you. But the truth is, rejection doesn't determine who you are. It's just one event in the vast story of your life, not the whole book. Seneca captured this perfectly when he said, You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. What this means is that we often treat rejection like a permanent scar, something that's going to haunt us forever. But in reality, rejection is just a fleeting moment, a passing storm, not an endless winter. It's not a judgment of your entire character. It's simply feedback, a step in the process of growth. Think about this. Some of the most successful people in the world have faced rejection over and over again. Take Walt Disney, for example. He was fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination and faced numerous rejections before building the Disney empire. Imagine if he had allowed those rejections to define him, if he had believed that those opinions about his work were a reflection of who he was. We wouldn't have the magical world of Disney today. Rejection only defines you if you allow it to. Instead of seeing it as a measure of your worth, see it for what it is an external event that is out of your control. What is within your control is how you react to it. Rejection can either be a stopping point or a stepping stone, depending on how you frame it. Think of each rejection as feedback, not failure. It's not a closed door. It's just a sign that perhaps you need to adjust your approach or look for another path. Every rejection carries a lesson if you're willing to see it. Maybe it's teaching you to be more patient to refine your skills, or to rethink your strategy. In real life, we often take rejection to heart. Imagine being rejected after an interview for a job you really wanted. The sting is real, and it's easy to think, I'm not good enough, or I'll never succeed. But what if, instead, you asked, what can I learn from this? How can I improve? By shifting your perspective, you take rejection from something painful to something empowering. Remember, you are not the sum of your rejections. You are defined by how you respond to them, how you get back up, how you adapt, and how you continue forward. In Stoicism, it's taught that events are neutral. It's our perception of them that gives them power. So, if you see rejection as something that breaks you, it will. But if you view it as a challenge, an opportunity to grow stronger, it will become just that. At the end of the day, Rejection is not a roadblock, it's a redirection. It's shaping your journey, but it doesn't decide where you'll end up. The power to define who you are lies in your hands, not in the hands of rejection. Rise above it, learn from it, and use it to fuel your next steps forward. Your worth isn't tied to the no you received, but to the resilience and strength with which you rise after each fall. Five. Accept what you cannot control. One of the core teachings of Stoicism is a simple but powerful idea. Focus on what you can control and let go of what you cannot. Rejection often feels devastating because we fixate on the outcome. The thing we wanted but didn't get. But ask yourself, did I truly have control over the other person's decision? Could I fully influence the outcome of that event? The answer, in most cases, is no. Stoicism teaches us to make a clear distinction between what is within our power and what is outside of it. The only things we truly have control over are our thoughts, actions, and responses. Everything else, other people's opinions, decisions, or circumstances, are beyond our control. When you realize this, you gain a sense of freedom. The weight of rejection begins to lift because you stop holding yourself responsible for things that were never in your hands to begin with. 
Epictetus put it perfectly when he said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This means that the sting of rejection doesn't come from the event itself, but from the meaning we attach to it. If you dwell on the rejection, replay it in your mind and let it define your self-worth. Then yes, it will feel painful. But if you recognize that the rejection was never fully under your control, you can begin to shift your mindset. Imagine applying for a promotion at work, putting in the effort, doing everything you can, but still getting passed over. The initial reaction might be frustration or disappointment, and that's natural. But when you take a step back and ask yourself, was the final decision really mine to make? The answer is no. You can influence the outcome with your hard work, but the decision-making process is ultimately out of your control. What is in your control, however, is how you choose to respond. You can decide whether to let this rejection consume you or to accept it and move forward. You can choose to learn from it, adjust your approach, or seek new opportunities. This is where the power of Stoicism comes in. It gives you the tools to take back control over your inner world, even when the outer world feels chaotic. When you accept what you cannot control, rejection loses its sting because it's no longer a reflection of your worth. You stop feeling like a victim of circumstances and start realizing that rejection is just an event, not a defining moment. You can't control the outcome, but you can control your reaction. And that's where true strength lies. In everyday life, there will always be moments when things don't go as planned. Relationships end, job offers fall through, or creative ideas get turned down. Instead of dwelling on what didn't go your way, imagine the mental relief that comes from simply saying, this wasn't in my control, but I can still choose how I move forward. By focusing on what's within your control, your attitude, your actions, your resilience, you shift from feeling powerless to empowered. You become less attached to external validation and more confident in your ability to handle whatever life throws at you. That's the essence of Stoicism, and when applied to rejection, it can be truly transformative. 6. Reframe rejection as redirection. Rejection often feels like the end of the road. You've put in your time, effort, and heart, only to be met with a firm no. But what if that rejection isn't the end, but merely a bend in the road? A new direction you didn't expect. The Stoics believed that obstacles are not there to stop us, but to guide us towards something greater. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. In other words, what blocks your path often ends up revealing the path you were meant to take. Think about a time in your life when you faced rejection. Maybe it was a job you desperately wanted, a relationship you hoped would work, or an opportunity that you were counting on. In that moment, the rejection stung deeply, and it may have felt like a dead end. But as time passed, did that rejection open up new doors? Did it push you toward a different opportunity? One that was even better than what you originally aimed for. This is how rejection works as redirection. When life tells you, no, it's not shutting you down. It's pushing you towards something else, something you might not have seen yet. Instead of viewing rejection as a failure, Stoicism teaches us to see it as a chance to be steered in a new direction. This is not about blind optimism, but about recognizing that rejection often creates space for something better to emerge. Consider the story of Steve Jobs, who was famously fired from Apple, the very company he co-founded. At the time, it was a crushing blow. But in hindsight, he saw that being fired allowed him to explore other ventures, like founding Next and acquiring Pixar, which ultimately led to Apple's resurgence and his triumphant return. That initial rejection was a redirection toward even greater success. In everyday life, this principle applies just as powerfully. Imagine you've been rejected from your dream job. At first, it feels like a crushing defeat. But maybe that no leads you to another opportunity, one you hadn't considered, where you end up excelling far beyond what you originally imagined. 
Or perhaps the rejection forces you to develop new skills, reflect on what you really want, and refine your path. This isn't just about waiting for a better opportunity to fall into your lap. It's about actively using rejection as a way to pivot, adapt, and push yourself forward. When life shuts one door, you need to start looking for another one. And when you shift your mindset from why me to what can I learn from this, you begin to see rejection for what it really is, a redirection to something greater. Remember, the stoic mindset encourages us to see obstacles as opportunities. What feels like a roadblock may actually be a new path waiting to be discovered. It's all about how you choose to frame the experience. Rejection becomes less about loss and more about potential. The moment you reframe rejection as redirection, you stop seeing it as a setback and start seeing it as an essential part of your growth journey. So the next time you face rejection, take a deep breath and remind yourself, it's not the end. It's simply a detour guiding you toward a new path that might be even better than the one you were originally on. By reframing rejection in this way, you transform what feels like a failure into an opportunity for growth and progress. 7. Detach from external validation. In today's world, it's easy to get caught up in the need for validation. We often measure our worth by the approval we receive from others, whether it's through praise at work, likes on social media, or compliments from friends and family. But when that validation doesn't come and we're faced with rejection instead, it can feel like an attack on who we are as a person. This is why the Stoics believed in detaching from external validation and finding peace within ourselves. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, reminds us that our value is not determined by others, but by how we view ourselves. He said, you act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. This means that when we place too much value on external validation, we make ourselves vulnerable to fear and disappointment. The truth is, other people's opinions are just that, opinions. They don't define you, nor do they dictate your worth. Think about a time when you were rejected, whether it was not getting the job you wanted or a person turning you down in a relationship. It's easy to spiral into self-doubt thinking, what's wrong with me? But if you step back and look at the situation objectively, you'll realize that this rejection is simply one person's perspective or one outcome out of many possible ones. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough, talented enough, or worthy of love. It just means that in this particular moment, in this particular context, things didn't align in your favor. Imagine you're an artist showcasing your work at a gallery. One person walks by and loves it, while another person walks by and dismisses it. Which opinion matters more? Neither because both are subjective. You, as the artist, must continue creating regardless of the praise or criticism you receive. The same is true in life. If you depend on others to validate your choices, your value, or your abilities, you'll constantly be at the mercy of their approval. But if you cultivate a sense of inner validation, name who you are and what you stand for, rejection loses its power over you. When you detach from the need for external validation, you liberate yourself from the fear of rejection. Rejection no longer feels like a reflection of your value as a person, but rather as a part of life, one person's opinion or a single moment in time. This inner strength allows you to keep going even when others doubt you. Marcus Aurelius wrote in his meditations, it never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinions than our own. This quote is a powerful reminder to focus less on what others think of us and more on how we view ourselves. When you learn to value your own judgment, when you build confidence from within, external rejection becomes just noise. So the next time you face rejection, ask yourself, am I seeking approval from others or am I secure in my own value? When you detach from the need for validation, you unlock a sense of peace and resilience that allows you to handle any rejection with grace. You remain centered 
grounded in who you are, regardless of what others think or say. And in doing so, you take back control of your own happiness and self-worth. 8. Build resilience through rejection. Stoicism teaches us that adversity, including rejection, is essential for building resilience. In life, rejection isn't something to fear or avoid. It's a tool that shapes our character. The more you face it, the stronger you become. Think of resilience like a muscle. The more it's challenged, the more it grows. The Stoics understood this deeply, and this is why they embraced difficulties as a necessary path to personal growth. Epictetus once said, Difficulties are things that show a person what they are. In this sense, rejection serves as a mirror, reflecting back your true inner strength and capacity to endure. It strips away the illusions of comfort and safety and forces you to confront what you're truly capable of. Instead of running from rejection, the stoic mindset encourages you to lean into it, to see it as an opportunity for building resilience and fortitude. Consider real-life scenarios. Think about someone applying for their dream job, only to be turned down multiple times. It's easy to feel discouraged after each. No, but every rejection offers a chance to learn, adapt, and try again with even more determination. Over time, the repeated exposure to rejection creates a kind of emotional callus. Each disappointment stings less because you've learned how to process it. You've built up your resilience. A powerful example of this can be found in the story of Thomas Edison. When inventing the light bulb, Edison reportedly faced over 1,000 failed attempts. Each failure could have been viewed as a form of rejection, a rejection from the universe that his idea wasn't working. But Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. He understood that every setback was a step closer to success. His resilience developed through countless rejections, ultimately led to one of the most important inventions in human history. Rejection in this way is not the end of the road, but a stepping stone. It gives you the chance to refine your approach, strengthen your resolve, and develop a toughness that will serve you in future challenges. Every time you face rejection, you're given the opportunity to decide. Will you let it defeat you, or will you rise stronger? Stoicism teaches us to choose the latter, to see rejection not as a barrier, but as a necessary part of the journey toward greatness. Moreover, each rejection helps build your emotional endurance. The Stoic philosopher Seneca often talked about the importance of preparing the mind for hardship. He believed that expecting difficulties made us less vulnerable when they actually happened. If you see rejection as inevitable, an unavoidable part of life, you'll be better equipped to handle it when it comes. Instead of taking it personally or seeing it as a failure, you'll view it as a chance to sharpen your mental and emotional resilience. Take a look at athletes who train for years, facing losses and setbacks along the way. For every championship win, there are countless defeats. But those losses teach them perseverance. They help athletes build the resilience needed to push harder, train smarter, and eventually achieve victory. Rejection works the same way. Every time you face rejection, you're training your mind to be tougher, more adaptable, and less swayed by external events. When you embrace rejection as a tool for growth, something incredible happens. It stops being a source of fear or shame and starts becoming a badge of honor. Each rejection you endure adds to your resilience, bringing you closer to your goals. In fact, many of the most successful people in the world, whether in business, art, or sports, will tell you that rejection was a key part of their journey. Without it, they wouldn't have developed the grit and determination to keep going. The next time you face rejection, remember this. It's not about the rejection itself. It's about what you do next. Will you crumble or will you let it fortify your spirit? When you embrace rejection as a stepping stone to resilience, you become unstoppable. As the Stoics would say, adversity is not to be avoided but welcomed, for it is through challenges that we grow into our true potential. So, rather than shrinking from rejection, 
Use it to build your mental and emotional strength. It's through these trials that you develop the resilience needed to face whatever life throws your way. Just like a muscle, your resilience grows stronger every time it's tested. And that's the true power of rejection. It doesn't just reveal your character. It helps shape it. 9. Focus on the present moment. Rejection has a way of pulling you into an emotional tug of war between the past and the future. You may find yourself obsessing over why things didn't work out or worrying that you'll never find success again. This mental back and forth can be overwhelming, trapping you in a cycle of regret and anxiety. But Stoicism teaches us that true peace and progress come from focusing on one thing, the present moment. Marcus Aurelius wisely wrote, confine yourself to the present. His words remind us that dwelling on the past is futile, as we cannot change what has already happened. Likewise, worrying about the future is equally unproductive, since it hasn't happened yet. The only thing we truly control is the present, the here and now. This is where we have the power to act and make changes, despite past failures or rejections. Imagine a scenario where you've just been turned down for a promotion or a new job. It's natural to replay the interview in your head, wondering what went wrong. Perhaps you start thinking about the future. Will I ever get the opportunity again? What if this means I'll never succeed? These thoughts, although understandable, keep you stuck in a mental loop, paralyzing you from taking action. Stoicism teaches that by focusing on what you can do right now, you break free from the grip of regret and fear. Let's look at a real-life example. Think about athletes who lose in competition. They could spend hours analyzing every mistake they made, or they could use that time to improve their skills. The athletes who succeed are those who focus on the present moment. They accept the loss, learn from it, and direct their energy into training harder for the next competition. By doing so, they maximize their chances for future success instead of letting the past weigh them down. This mindset is crucial for anyone dealing with rejection. Maybe you didn't get the job, maybe your relationship ended, or maybe your idea was rejected. Instead of getting lost in the what-ifs and what-could-have-beens, ground yourself in the present. Ask yourself, what can I do today to move forward? It might be applying for another job, reaching out to new opportunities, or simply taking time to reflect and plan your next step. Whatever it is, focus on actionable steps in the present, not on reliving the past or fearing the future. There's also a sense of freedom that comes with living in the present. When you stop clinging to the past and worrying about the future, you release yourself from unnecessary mental baggage. You gain clarity making it easier to move forward without being weighed down by negative emotions. Seneca emphasized this idea, teaching that life is long if you know how to use it. In other words, don't waste your time obsessing over things you cannot control. Use the present moment to live fully, to act wisely, and to move forward with intention. A great way to ground yourself in the present is through mindfulness. This can be as simple as taking a few deep breaths, focusing on your surroundings, or engaging in a small, purposeful activity. When you center yourself in the present, you begin to let go of the mental clutter that rejection often brings. You stop wondering, what did I do wrong? And start asking, what can I do right, right now? Let's consider another real-world example. An entrepreneur who pitches their idea to investors and gets rejected. They could spend days or weeks questioning why they were turned down. Or they could take the feedback, refine their pitch, and seek out new investors. The entrepreneurs who succeed are those who focus on what they can control in the present. They don't allow the rejection to derail them because they understand that their power lies in the actions they take moving forward, not in revisiting the past or fearing the future. The power of Stoicism lies in this ability to bring you back to the present moment. When faced with rejection, remind yourself that the only time you can truly control is now. You can't rewrite the past, and you can't predict what tomorrow will bring. But you can control what you do with this moment, how you think, how you act, and how you respond. 
This lesson can be applied in all areas of life, whether it's a career setback, a relationship breakdown, or even personal failures. By focusing on the present, you reclaim your power. You stop letting the rejection dictate your mood and mindset, and you start using the moment to your advantage. The present is where growth happens, where decisions are made, and where the future is built. In the end, rejection is just one part of your journey. How you handle the moment after rejection is what truly defines your path forward. By staying grounded in the present, you can respond with clarity, strength, and purpose, just as the Stoics would advise. In conclusion, rejection is inevitable. It's a part of life, but it doesn't have to define you. Through the wisdom of Stoicism, you can learn to handle rejection with grace, strength, and resilience. These lessons will empower you to transform rejection from a source of pain into an opportunity for growth. If you found these lessons helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. By doing so, you'll not only stay connected to more content like this, but you'll also join a community focused on self-growth and resilience. Every lesson we learn together will guide you closer to a stronger, more empowered version of yourself. Remember, it's not the rejection that matters, but how you respond to it. As the Stoics believed, every no is just another step towards a greater yes. You have the power within you to rise above any rejection and come out stronger on the other side. Thank you for watching.